What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. So I bet a lot of you are wondering, where the hell has Comic Breakdown been? Some of you already know that I've set out into different ventures. In the last couple of months, I found myself going down a new path. I've become part of a really awesome team known as King Plug Cards, a group of individuals that more or less sell Pokemon cards on whatnot. I've become one of their streamers, and honestly, it's been tons of fun and highly lucrative. The only downside is that it has taken me away from the YouTube channel, working insane hours all week long. I am finding it very difficult to find time for the YouTube channel, and this is no way saying that the channel is going anywhere. Content is just gonna be a little slow until I can find a good pacing, but I promise you I will do my best to get all up to date on all the comics that are currently ongoing. We will cover as many of them as we can as much as we can. I appreciate every single one of you being here, and so let's get this started. We're jumping into DC vs. Vampires World War V issue number 3. Make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel make sure that you like this video and with that being said let's dive into this breakdown all right gang so as we dive into this issue we're picking up 10 months ago and what we have really seen been going on is miracle man is running around with a baby miracle man is a vampire we don't know anything about this baby. We don't know where it came from, whose it is, what's going on. This gives us that explanation. Barda and Miracle Man, 10 months ago, they had sex. Unable to control his urge, he bites her. And that, that is the night the miracle was created. As we hop over to present day, we pick up with Green Lantern, Alfred Pennyworth. Putting on the lantern ring, he faces off against the vampiric Wonder Woman, with her immediately going in on him. She, she attempts to demean him, she attempts to bring him down, to let him know that she's fought against lanterns. She's fought side by side with them, she has killed them with her own hands. And every lantern learned that no matter how powerful the will, the fists of Wonder Woman were much stronger. But this doesn't deter him in the slightest bit. Alfred stands his ground. He knocks her back. And this gives him the opportunity to run. Alfred knows that this is not the fight he wants to fight right this moment. He knows the day will come where he has to face against her. But that day will not be today. Hopping over to Gotham, we pick up with Aquaman and Grodd. Now it is to nobody's surprise that Aquaman, the vampiric version of him, the evil version of him, he is seeking power. This power comes in the form of the vampiric throne. With Barbara Gordon being dead, the seat is vacant. But Grodd is very adamant that nobody is going to be sitting in that throne, while others may be plotting for it. Grodd says that anybody that tries to make this their home, he will ensure it becomes their tomb. But when they are interrupted by an old woman, she comes to discuss a miracle child. In Newark, New Jersey, we're picking up with Green Arrow, Zealot, and his entire team. They have set up a trap for these biters, for the vampires. They did so because they were looking for information, all in an attempt to capture one of them. They needed to get something out of them to figure out what's going on in these cities. Giant buildings storing actual food. Food for humans. Green Arrow wants to know why. Over in Pennsylvania, what we have is the one and only Ghostmaker. Now probably the one, one of the most deadly vampires to ever exist. Or he could just still be human working for them. I don't remember exactly if Ghostmaker had been turned into a vampire, but considering he's working for them, it's possible. But we all know Ghostmaker is somebody that doesn't necessarily play for the good side. So if the world goes to shit, Ghostmaker might just make deals with the vampire so that he doesn't get turned into one. But based on what we have seen, the likelihood Ghostmaker is a vampire. And right now, he is hunting down this Miracle Child. They are hunting down Mr. Miracle. 
taking us back over to Green Arrow. As he interrogates these guys, one of them starts to spill his guts. Talks about Punchline's black markets, about the Miracle Childs, about a vampire who says he's from the future. But what grabs Green Arrow's attention is the Miracle Childs. Not really understanding this, not knowing what this might mean. He goes to interrogate more, but the other vampire attacks him, calls him a traitor, and he kills the vampire that was about to inform them. And then he kills himself. Obviously, this is information that they don't want out in the world. Hopping over to the snowy darkness of Virginia, Damien and his army, they wait for a convoy. And as this convoy crosses the bridge, they detonate. They blow this all to hell, opening up one of the trucks. This was a trap, but not set by Damien. Because coming out of one of those trucks, we have Raven, we have Cassie, and we have Shazam. All vampires. All sent to kill Damien. In a matter of moments, all hell breaks loose. Absolute chaos breaking out. With the battle ensuing, we have Cassie who goes in, grabs Damien. He is wanted alive. He is the only one that matters in this situation. And so grabbing him, Batwoman stops her, frees Damien from her grasp, and that's when she does her Hail Mary pass. She ignites her light bomb, encapsulating herself and Damien before she ignites it. We see the giant blast of light. It goes out in all directions. And as Damien gets up off the ground, he looks around to see all the dead around them, telling Batwoman that next time he wants a little bit more warning. But this bought them a minute, an opportunity to run. As he goes to grab Batwoman's hand, he realizes that she is nothing but dust. She was able to save Damien, but not herself. Now, with no army, he's on the run. With him being able to make a getaway into the woodline nearby, Shazam, Raven, and Cassie, they're all still alive. They weren't taken out of the fight, and now they search the woods. Dawn is near. It is only a matter of time before the sun comes for them, as he pulls a stake out of his shoulder, thinking that this is the last moment. Why not? Go out in a blaze of glory. But that's when some black boots come up, telling him not to think about it. Telling him that he was trained better than that. Tells him that we do not fight when we cannot win. We wait for the advantage. The person, the individual standing before him, it appears to be Batman. Batman that we thought was dead. He tells Damien that you're telegraphing your strikes. That he was trained better than this. That he trained him better than this. That if they want to live much longer, they gotta go somewhere else. Damien asking who you are. He takes off the mask. And all Damien can say is, oh, and that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Absolutely banger of an issue, and I'm putting my money on it right now. Batman is actually Alfred Pennyworth. It makes the most sense. Alfred takes off from the fight because his only technically living child is out there being hunted by all vampires. A war being waged. Now he has the power, the ability to fight by his side, to protect him at all costs. And what better way to bring some fear into the world than to put on the cow, to put on the cape, to become the Batman and make everybody believe that the Batman is back. To make them believe that the Batman is still alive. To instill fear into their hearts. Because if Batman is alive, then nobody is safe. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you want to get caught up on everything going on with DC vs. Vampires, go ahead, check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything that is going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from 
loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.